but that yeah. certainly hasn't been the case. So again, you know, history is not a perfect uh, or exact. Yeah, I think you're right. We've seen all three sets of these triple anti-aircraft guns. We've seen the one single 25 millimeter, which is still on the conning tower, and we've seen the stern deck gun. I read that in preparation for the planes to take off, they would preheat the engines underwater. Huh. By, uh, Can you change that camera, please, to uh, a hot oil lubricating system? Bucket cam. Oh, yeah. Yeah, planes don't start with cold engines. No. It's tough. Going you on, gotta right? turn uh, starboard rail cam off. Okay. Thank you. I'm about to have an epileptic fit watching that thing. So is that the smaller like thing with the pontoons in it? See right here. Uh, oh, interesting. Oh. Hans, what do you think? Yeah, I would have had two, one on each side for the, the pontoon storage cylinders. So I wonder if this is one of them and the mm -hmm. other one we just saw right, you know, right behind it. Yeah. Can I come right up and do a counterclockwise turn for yeah. me? Okay, I gotta give you the five minute warning. Roger, five minute warning. But it's awfully nice to give that when you found all the stuff you were looking exactly. for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Much easier to make that call now. Exactly. But again, I'll, I'll say again how important having that multi-beam was because we were able to just march from target to target to target because we saw them. Oh, yeah. Had, yeah. had we not had that perspective, we would have found the big section maybe found the maybe. smaller section but maybe after that it would have just been a kind of a random search yeah. hoping something would show up on the sector scanner which is much less sensitive to these kinds of small features near the bottom the gray for cliff walls I'm gonna do another turn, take the last. Yeah, sure. Am I making you guys dizzy yet? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just do a couple passes right over it each way, and that Wait, might be calling three, it a day. Three minutes. Ooh, that'll give me some good multi-beam data. Yeah. Pretty close to it. That's fine. Somebody wrote in, I hope you all get a stack of buttered pancakes after this. <laughs> Every morning. Yeah. <laughs> this morning I had a 
excruciating, agonizing decision whether it was waffles with blueberries or French toast with blueberries. Are you going to have to make these decisions? The struggle is real. <laughs> well, that's a nice view on Zeus there. Okay, I'll come around and get the uh, inverse. And. Uh, Did we get any lasers on this? Yes. I did, yeah. Yes. I was so nice. Thank trying you. to work out how thick that metal was there. Yes. Got another uh, dot on it while we're going by. It looks. I don't know if we can figure that out in post, but. Yeah, I can't tell if that's one of those pontoon storage cylinders or if it's just part of the, the main aircraft hangar that collapsed in, folded in that's, under pressure. Se several, several of the folks out there have said, no, that's a folded hangar. It looks yeah. like the hangar imploded. Yeah, that's not a separate storage vessel, yeah. It just folded in, imploded. And all those square boxes scattered across the bottom, too, they look suspiciously uniform, don't they? Those little black boxes? Is yep. that a they, monkfish? They... What? I think we have one last... One last one monkfish. Last monkfish. No, no way. Right zoom, zoom in on it right in the middle. Oh, my gosh. It is a goosefish. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my gosh. <laughs> what a way to end the Wait, dive. A... Go ahead, Manel. Copy. Just for you. <gasps> oh Just for Alish. Oh I'm my gonna, like, gosh. <laughs> it's your and, picture. and with that parting shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, you can go a little tighter if you want. Yeah. Wow. Yay. I'm afraid oh we God. have to call it a close. <laughs> oh, that's like the perfect ending <laughs> to our last dive. That, lasers? All right, yes. everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's a little guy. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <gasps> He's the is. best monkfish, goosefish, moosefish ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aww. Dan, I'm sorry to say. Thank you, Dan. Right. My pleasure. Thank you all. Oh, that yeah, was a spectacular uh, dive. Aww. That's so amazing. Yeah, Perfect yeah. way to end. And... I'm afraid this is the last ROV dive for the oh. season. There'll be yep. there'll be two more legs of Nautilus. There'll be mapping, lots of good mapping coming up. And we're gonna go grease the cable now. We're gonna oh my god, put that out was so amazing. Four thousand meters of cable <laughs> and we inject saw grease in it dive, to preserve right? it. Yep. For the next That's, season. Oh, that I thought you meant like place the main break. Thank you, OET team. Thank you, watch. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Hans. Yeah. Thanks, Hans. Let, let, let me mention. Bye, Hans. Hope dies last. Hans. <laughs> Hope dies last. <laughs> yeah. Hans von Tilburg, <laughs> who's been a resident expert with us, and it's been great. Thank you. Yes. Hope dies last. This was icing on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> All the major features. Fantastic. That's great. Okay. I learned so much, Hans. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Bob, we decided uh, Jonathan's going to build 3D bits of all these different pieces, and we're going to give it to you as a puzzle. <laughs> and you're going to have to try to put it together into a submarine. Does Jonathan know this? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> He's probably listening in. <laughs> oh, yeah. That might take a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for those of you who don't know, Bob is... Uh, 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 indomitable. Is that a stingray? Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. This is the best time <laughs> ever. <laughs> Move on. A torpedo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, Ray, start coming up on the winch. Okay. And That's I'll it. see how long I can hold out on the stingray before you yank me <laughs> off the seabed. The All fading right. the fading shot. Come, coming at two meters per minute now. Uh, oh, that's a gorgeous yeah. pattern on it. Yeah. Oh, right. Zoom in just a bit, Manel. The yes, goosefish has been outdone now. Wow. Uh, maybe just a little more. Copy. Ooh. That's good. Thanks. We yeah. got lots of thank yous coming in for amazing dives. Monkfish rule. <laughs> cool goosefish.
It was a great season. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Took lots of memories and barely even left a footprint. Oh, that's true. Aww. Okay, you yeah. can go wide. That Bobby. is the right. wench Yay. giving me the Yankee. Aww. All right, Jonathan, you can uh, stop photogrammetry. <laughs> <laughs> and start processing. Taylor, Ann, did we There's have no a... Argu Dan, can no you press control with C the winch. on the terminal there with the photogrammetry? Uh, uh, Dan, that's you. Did oh, you hear Jonathan? Dan. I did not. What did he say? Well, Jonathan, can you right, say that you're again? You're good. You can look. Uh, look uh, we also want to thank all the people yeah, look, who joined zero, in on the zero. chat. You can take your auto head off. No, you it off. Okay. It really makes Sweet. our day out here. Uh, you have to slow down a little bit for me. We really he said something it. about the terminal. I don't know. He's not, he's not there anymore. Maybe he's coming up. Taylor Ann, did you manage to get an ID on that ray? I think it's the same deep water one we saw. So, Plesio Bastis, Davy S E, Davy S I, Davy. I can't pronounce it. Awesome. <laughs> final identification. Yeah, that works for me. And tell Taylor Ann's going to get out of the van before they see something in the water column <laughs> and, and make her identify <laughs> that again too. Uh, we have a thank you so much from old oceanographers in Corvallis, Oregon. There are a lot of old oceanographers in Corvallis. <laughs> 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 and I know many of those. <laughs> 45-minute ride from my house. Looks like we're two five minutes from the surface. Two five. Yeah, all of our toys are stowed. Let's check the uh, cameras. Uh, we have thanks for a fun, informative, and interesting year. Looking forward to all the highlights uh, to last for the winter until next year. I cannot believe that we saw that monkfish right at the end. I know, right? That, that was, was like... That was too perfect. perfect. You should be yeah. manifested it. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. I got you. It was because you got everyone to sign your little model. Excuse me. I will uh, pull From a Quinn. little harder. I'm making about uh, 27, 28 right now. Yeah, I got your utility up. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Larry. We got lots of thank yous coming in online. Oh. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and uh, if you're a student, participate in the patch contest for our next uh, uh, season of expeditions. NautilusLive.org, if you're watching on YouTube. No. What the heck? Oh, that one's just going to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't mindlessly. Was that your fidget toy, Rye? Yeah. <laughs> Got a little water coming over the back deck. Wow. Yeah, it uh -oh. up. Those cups are gonna have some fun. Oh yeah. Well I don't know if we're gonna be. I don't know if we're gonna get a <gasps> I'd like to dive in or not. I think it's, it's on still the on it's the... on the board of lies. <laughs> <laughs> you hear what you just said? It, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was when we came in here, but... Uh, no, it's it's still on. They just yeah, they sent a... a uh, Jason, I think, or somebody sent a picture. Madison, maybe. 
yeah. on the chat. They pushed everything back about two hours. The wind's up at uh, 22 knots, so mm. I don't know. Were we supposed to transit to a different spot, though? Yeah. Okay. But maybe less transit if they're going to do an abbreviated... I don't think with this uh, weather we can um, run it down to that, gotcha. uh, or it would be marginal. Uh, are, are the snap loads on our cable at that depth will be? We have to have pretty calm weather to r run it down to that depth. All the weight of the wire and the uh, acceleration of the A-frame up and down. We'll see, we'll see. So some people are asking about the next expedition. So there uh, will be two more uh, mapping expeditions. The next one's about a week, and then the last one is about a month long mapping expedition. Uh, we got a shout out, uh, Rai, from Grandma and Grandpa Clem. So exciting to. Yeah, so exciting to watch all the excitement today, they say. Hi, it's me. <laughs> I think my family is uh, representing a lot. On <laughs> They're like 50% of the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Sure thing. Oh, we're already in. Yeah, right. We look good for. Are you reading bridge, the, bridge, the uh, let's start message ahead, about the uh, hurl guide? Yeah, it's okay. something on the last expedition. We did let the I forget her name, but the operator of that website know that it's down. Um, but I think she's been away at sea herself, so she's not been able to have access to oh, okay. be able to actually get in there and fix yeah. the issues. But uh, it was something that we did notify them about uh, about a month ago. Okay. Yeah. So somebody on the on the. Chad is uh, commenting that the hurl, uh, um, basically their their guide, their uh, deep sea ID guide is down, and so yeah, I've been using the um, Okeanos and uh, NOAA exploration benthic guides. Uh, is is that what they should Google, or is there like a easy yeah. URL that we could give them or something? Yeah, you could just Google benthic deep water animal guide, and it should come up, or NOAA deep sea animal guide. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome to find all the hangar sections. Yeah. Uh, viewers asking what you're spinning, Dan. I am spinning uh, a pink fidget spinner that uh, I believe this one might be Samantha that brought this out. 
One of our navigators. We have a. There's an array of them. They kind of come and go. Uh, there was a couple blue ones around. I don't know where they are. They kind of pile up over there at the nav station. So. Hey. <laughs> Sometimes there's not a whole lot to do around here. Uh, somebody's asking, was that Bob that I heard? Yes. He's been in and out of the control van. Lots of thank yous still coming in. We are ascending now. in that ranch real soon, Ray. Yeah. Now the work for us begins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone else is... Cleaning the van. Everyone else is partying. <laughs> Cleaning the van. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did we get a word on the... Uh, That's what the Board of Vice is. Atalanta dip? I don't know what they have planned there. But, uh, yeah, the first thing we have to do is... Uh, Get oily and uh, remove the tether from between Atalanta and Hercules. And then seal all that back up, go through all the pre dives, fill it full of oil, and go through all the pre dives. That's probably an hour or two work, and we have to do that in such a fashion we can put the tether back on next season. Um, And then we have to remove the main hydro, uh, main electrical motor from Hercules. So to do that, we have to break it apart from the pump and get the crane over. And yeah. Slide that out. We're going to send that back to the manufacturer for some winter maintenance. drop the maybe uh, I don't know if we're in, I gotta look at Josh's uh, demo plan he's got <laughs> I've been afraid to look at it um, yeah. we may have to uh, he may want to drop the tether off of uh, the back of Hercules as well just to make it easier to move and stow put it back in its box and uh, we might get away with wrapping it up on the uh, on the back of Hercules there and securing it. But the problem is those BSRs are big and heavy. Yeah. They are uh, safer in their box to... What's our time to surface? We about 10 minutes out? Yeah. 16 minutes, 25 seconds. All right. I can probably make a little better time now that you're yeah. dragging me and I've got around I can Full up and less forward. Yeah. And there, I shouldn't have to do any forward. Rye, we have another message. Uh, it's from your mom and dad. It says, we're here too, Rye. Thank you, everyone. It has been an amazing expedition to follow along with. So proud of you, Rye, mom and dad. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
We want Ray back again. So we're going to steal her and <laughs> Shanghai her, and uh, off we go to where are we going next? Palau? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so somebody's asking about the seasons. Can someone explain the length of a season and what usually goes on? Bridge, bridge nav. We're about 10 minutes from starting recovery. Um, I can explain uh, the past seasons that I've been involved with. Um, we um, we do a lot of, uh, we give Hercules and Atalanta and Argus and uh, Little Hercules and uh, the rest of the ship a lot of uh, love, blood, sweat and tears uh, during the off season. So they get um, whatever outstanding maintenance that is incurred during the season. Plus there's usually some upgrades going on and uh, stuff like that. So that keeps uh, both the ship's crew and the ROV crew and the video crew and the navigation crew, pretty much everybody uh, busy for some period during the off season. And um, then we, depending on where we're mobilizing out of, um, we'll come over and send kind of some advanced teams and uh, we'll put all the gear back onto Nautilus. A lot of times it gets taken off the ship if the ship's doing other activities during the off season where we're not doing uh, ROV work. And so we have to then uh, mobilize all that stuff, all that gear back aboard the ship and then uh, test everything. So, and it takes kind of a village to do that. Oh, that's Deck chief on the comms to the bridge. Um, yeah, so we need all the different departments. We need the video department, the data engineers, the navigators, everybody, uh, the ship's crew to, um, I hope I didn't miss anybody there, uh, to, to test the entire system. And then we go out for what we call shakedown. That's usually a week or two, depending on uh, what gear we're, we're testing. So we kind of test the whole system make sure everything's working. They do some stuff. Uh, we do a couple, several ROV dives. And we do some mapping exercises to test the ship's multi-beam. And uh, we also do um, a USBL calibration to uh, make sure that the acoustic positioning for Hercules and Atalanta with the ship's transducer are accurate. That's Charlie to proceed for, for recovery from the captain. So we are right. about 10 minutes away here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, then we start, uh, depending on what's on the schedule, we uh, we crew the ship up. And uh, usually the expeditions are somewhere between, usually I guess they average around 30 days, four weeks. But some are a break, you know, two weeks we come in and change out some of the science party. So preseason stuff happens between generally January and March. Mobilization usually happens in late a mid to late April. Season usually starts around the first of May, and we go through until uh, yeah, close to Christmas. Somewhere in there, again, uh, next year will be a transit to British Columbia over to uh, Rice, neck of the woods, yep. to uh, work with her crew on the cable observatory there. Are you going to come out with us next year on Hopefully. ONC? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hopeful. I never know until about three days before, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, we get more notice than that. <laughs> 
Well, we'll make sure and tell Josh uh, to put you on the list. Yeah. This time, hopefully, we won't work crazy three to three shifts. That was pretty brutal. I don't want to do that again. I think uh, my side of it, we got those those uh, multi-beam days. So we got a, a few crazy days and then a few really relaxed days and then a few really crazy days. I was kind of dragging on that one. Uh, you want to go manual there? Sure. Uh, I had uh, done an expedition before that and then rode the ship over and did some maintenance on the way on the crossing. Oh yeah, so you were there for the whole? Yeah, Danny and I did uh, some upgrades on the manipulator arm and uh, I forget what else we did, we had a few other upgrades to do. We had a boatload of uh, stem sea kids and <laughs> They, just as it happened, we left Honolulu like just after dinner. So they had this big, huge pork chop dinner and, you know, cookies and I think it might have been a Sunday ice cream almost. And we came out of Honolulu into weather and turned left. <laughs> Those poor kids were lined up along the social deck rail and the starboard rail. Just uh, thanks. What? <laughs> beating, <laughs> beating the sharks. They were so seasick <laughs> for like three days, two days. Aww. And they... The captain's old school. He says, you know, take those patches off, let your body accumulate or uh, acclimate to the motion of the ship. And they listened to him. And so we had a few quiet days. And after they came back to life, there was uh, a lot of uh, yeah. They were they were pretty busy. These are college students. Uh, I think they were uh, pre-college students. Uh, high school age. Yeah. They were part of STEM C. Yeah, part of uh, STEM C. I, I forget their ages. They all look like junior high school kids to me, but a great bunch of kids. They got involved in um, helping us out do maintenance on the ROV. They got to, um, uh, they took over our 3D printer and were printing all kinds of. Um, uh, Nautilus-oriented STEM kind of things on the printer, and uh, they, uh, Danny uh, Hinshaw from um, University of Hawaii, uh, he really had a great rapport with him. He had he he would break them into groups and bring half of them up here, and he had them uh, simulating and operating the ROV. And we're also doing some testing of the manipulator in the ROV system, so he had them up here pushing buttons and moving levers and joysticks and they would disappear up here for hours and hours. I don't know what they were. We would sit each one in each chair and rotate them around. And Sorry, I was looking at the wrong number there, right? Yeah, I, know. I was. I was wondering why. Yeah, never <laughs> mind. You so should tell me. Oh, like, no. I do that all the time too. It's not Sometimes I gotta think about it for a while to make sure I'm correct. <laughs> I'm so used to looking. That's the number I always look at. Yeah. Yeah. We got the tether wraps over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100 is our usual manual mode.
whole lot of squiggly lines on that. Yeah, good work, Dan. <laughs> Many squiggles. It's amazing we didn't tie ourselves on a knot there. The rye was managing it from Atalanta side, right? Yeah. I have to say the, uh, I was getting a brain workout trying to figure out what direction <laughs> to go. <laughs> well, it, it's weird. This machine, sometimes it is real happy to come one way, yeah. and the other way it just doesn't yeah. go anywhere. So I try one way and not get there, and especially when we're in a hurry. So. I think that, uh, this trip has taught me my left from my right, finally. No, I'm... <laughs> Uh, 28 years I'm, old? I'm glad you've got it because I. It's frustrating. I have to stop and think about it. And I, if I don't, I get it wrong and we move, <laughs> move the ship the wrong way. I struggle more with the, the clockwise, counterclockwise. It gets me. Like, I actually <laughs> kind of like imagine the clock's actually going around. What is the Diddy Never Ever Northeast Southwest? Okay, ready for Sorry, what did you say? There's a Diddy for Northeast Southwest. Oh, yeah. What's really confusing, some ROVs have the outer compass ring rotate, so it's okay. not north up all the time. Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, like the chilling vehicles, there's an option to change it depending on the pilot's preference. but. Uh, some of them, like um, the ISC systems, are not. So that's just a confusing rotating ring of numbers to me when it does that. Yeah, coordinating the directions and then port and starboard thrown in and then counterclockwise, clockwise, and then looking at the nav screen, and I was like, it's a good one. I try and um, reference it from the ship. Yeah. So trying to. <laughs> Somebody wrote in, let's not forget to thank the moose fish for showing up in every dive. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it wasn't every dive. It was. It was, it was, it knew exactly when to make an entrance, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't forget to thank the SEFs for connecting us to the outside world. Otherwise, we'd be in our... Thanks. My pleasure. We'd be stuck here in our little glass bubble all by ourselves. <laughs> be boring. I'll stop five zero meters. Deck, deck, van, all stop, five zero. Van, deck, yeah, all copy. The, that's us taking control, starting to recover. Van copies. Would you normally turn your lights off now? Yeah. Yeah, I should turn it. You can uh, turn all the ROV ones off as well. Okay. Uh, if it was nighttime, I would, I would leave them on, but. Ooh, that's fast. There's your uh, relocated light. <laughs> yeah. He's better there. You could tell totally, too, from the, <laughs> the way the light beam was for the last couple of surveys. Yeah. No, it's better. I like it there. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> the is one it? in front of Norbit. I hooked uh -huh. the tether behind it. Uh -huh. It's funny, that was the third bullet item on my list for our takeaways. Well, it's just dangling. You can see it wiggling. Yeah. Our uh, takeaways from the from this expedition. We were Hope I didn't lose my ram mount. Wish 
I turn off thrusters? Um? Yep, you can disable those. Looks like I adjusted the uh, starboard one as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like pointing in. Yeah, they really need to, there needs to be a horizontal bar across the front. And if we're going to put them on the outside like that, they need uh, elephant ears, we call it. So we mm. do some speed rail or yeah. uh, some kind of nice bent aluminum thing that we come out the lights in and the tether will just slip off them. You can tilt your camera up if you want. You'll get a nice view of the back of the ship. Good habit if the Zeus is on there, which it may be next year, you have to do that, otherwise it'll yeah. hit the deck. Right. Oh. I need to, uh, sorry, I got to pull on. pull on it a little harder. So I should be full ahead here on the yeah. hurt, just to keep it away from the transom there. Jay's putting an extra line on it because we have a little weather there and see when the heave of the ship there pulls on it. Slack off a little bit and just let the ship drag us. Would you normally have anything else off at this point? I know camera stays on, but. No, I, we don't bother. Just the sonars and the lights. Yeah, okay. Yeah, every, everything else uh, resets when we. Okay, it looks like they fixed the chair. <laughs> control the mains. Looks like somebody was taking the chair up that had gotten broken. Oh no, never mind, they're taking the chair down now. You want to hold position, or are you okay? Here, you want to keep moving. I think we should keep moving in the weather. Roger. Uh, yeah, it's dangerous asking the pilot that in the weather if they don't know. They should know. If you try to hold position, I think it. Yeah. Could move half a shift length or so. We could do a policy of just, say, give the ship a move 10 or 20 meters ahead. 
Uh, that can get, <coughs> that can get you too. Any anything except steady as she goes during recovery yeah. is a recipe for Mis disaster. But misinterpretation. The standard used to be that they would hold position once Atlantis on board. That was Rennie's thing. And uh, it took me, uh, it took a while to get him to, We that's our compromise. So now you ask. So yeah, if it was calm weather, I would maybe hold position. But In the back of my mind, the lights could go out on Herc at any time. Yeah. Especially during launch and recovery, and especially during weather when it's getting yanked yeah. about, or the boat could, you know, lose position and go sideways. So sure. it, if it's moving forward, it's less likely to lose control. And if the lights do go out, you can see I've, you know, I don't have to. I can basically not do anything here and get the vehicle back on board safely. If the ship wasn't moving and the lights went out, then we'd have to start the ship moving. And by time and all the confusion and the chaos of the screens going black, that that time that it takes to do that could be sideways. We have a viewer that's noticing a dangling light or something. Yeah, that's the light I got caught on the tether there when we were doing our pirouettes around the... I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the line is doesn't look like anything to me. Looks fine to me. I was <laughs> Dynamic uh, lighting. I was just getting yeah. ready. At some point, I'm going to let TJ know about it. So. It's for dramatic effect. The ooh and the ah. You know you've been getting western with it when you got a few bits dangling off there of you <laughs> when you recover it. <laughs> oh, uh, this is a good question. With the upcoming Jarvis Island mapping, what does it mean for Jarvis to get monument status? All stations, that's Do you know the, anything about that, to Tina? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, but uh, I think we should probably be paused for comms because okay. yeah. they're recovering. But I'm not sure. Um, but I can look into that for sure. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Uh, just to confirm, there's a potential dropped object on the port side of ROV. Sorry. We're not, I mean, Hercules isn't even returning anyway.
Gotcha. Yeah. Power secure. No. Yeah. Sorry about that. Nice. Mike had a tiger by the tail on that one. Buck and Bronco. A good thing because they do break away, right? Yeah. So it is. 